In this video, we'll show you how to create a working image slider from scratch and add it to a project without a single line of code using our conditional rendering feature. Hi everyone, it's Helena from Teleport HQ, the collaborative low-code platform that automatically writes and deploys code so you don't have to. Let's jump right into it. Let's start this video by selecting a template to work on. The Helpa template is perfect for what we want to accomplish today. But before we get started with actually building the slider, we need to set everything up. First, click on the project name and go to Project Settings. Next, go to the Experimental section, check Developer Mode, click Save Changes, and return to the project. Next, scroll down and find a section where we could add our image slider. This testimonial section will work perfectly. You'll need to duplicate it and give it a different name, something like Image Slider. Now, drag it to the top of the project under the Header section, remove the existing content, and give it a heading and some text. The slideshow will be a component, so go to the left panel, click on the plus symbol, select New Component, and give it the name Image Slider. From the Elements tab, drag a row and add two columns inside it, which will be our buttons and an image element. Also, change the element's height to Auto, so it will scale appropriately. Finally, let's name the row element Slide 1 and the containers Left Button and Right Button. Now you can start styling the image slider. Select the image and give it a 100% width and a 50 VH height to make it responsive. Now, replace the placeholder image. From the Assets Manager in the left panel, go to the Unsplash section and search for Wild Animals. This image of a red panda is perfect. Go to the right panel and add a shadow to the image with 16 pixels height and width, zero spread and blur, and the color can be the primary green of the project. This will make it look crisp and fit into the entire project. Next up, the buttons. Select both columns by holding Control or Command and clicking on the elements. Go to the right panel and give them 50 pixels width and height. Then, remove the border, add the same green color as the background, and give them a 50% radius so they become circles. Next, go to the Hover section and select Hover. Change the green background to a slightly darker green in the Hover state. Now go to the Advanced panel and add the Cursor, Pointer property, so the buttons appear clickable. Next, select the left button and go to the left panel, Assets Manager, and Icons. Search for arrow and add a left arrow to the left button and a right arrow to the right button. Select them both, go to the background, and choose white. Finally, it's time to position them. Select the left button, go to Position, and choose Freestyle. Delete the existing values and add 3% left. Do the same for the right, but add 3% to the right. The buttons will now be responsive as well. Building all the slides. Now we need to create the other two slides. Go to the left panel and select the slide one container. Then duplicate it using the Control or Command D shortcut and rename it to slide two. Select the image element inside, go to the Assets Manager, Unsplash, and replace the image with a different one. Now duplicate the second slide and choose a third image. We'll use the conditional rendering feature to make the slideshow work. First, go to Setup and switch to the State tab. Click the plus button to create a new state. Give it a name like Slide Number and a default value of 1. Now select the Slide 1 container and go to the right panel. In the Conditional Rendering section, check the Conditional Rendering switch and choose the Slide Number state that you previously created in the input, giving it a value of 1. For the second slide, give the state the value of 2, and for the third, the value of 3. To bring this all together, we'll need to add events to the buttons to switch the state of the slideshow. In the first slide, choose the left button and go to the right panel. Then, in the Events tab, go to the Modifies input and add the value of 3. This means when you click this button, it will change the state of the component to 3, which will move the image slider to the third previous slide. Select the right button and give it the value of 2 to move the slider to the next slide. Now perform the same operation on the remaining two slides. It's finally time to add the image slider to the project. From the component section, grab the image slider component and add it to the section we prepared at the start of the video. Check if it looks good on all media queries and it's done. To preview the project, we need to use the feature we enabled at the start, developer mode. Go to the top left, click developer mode and click the small sync project icon. 
After refreshing, scroll down and see the slideshow in action. And that's it. In this video, we covered how to create a component and build it into a slideshow and then use conditional rendering to make the slide switch. If you found this tutorial useful, please let us know in the comments below. We are working on more tutorials, so subscribe to be notified when new videos are published. See you in the next one.